Hello. Hello, hello, and welcome to season four, episode 10 of Fabrically Speaking Live. I'm a little bit wonky today because we're in the middle of moving our operations. And uh, so my mind is a little bit split. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's freezing in the UK. Hi, Shirley from California. And Sheila is apparently in the UK. And Amy, better days. Windy Harper in snowy North Dakota. It's nice here today. We have enjoyed two days of 60 degree highs. And uh, hi, Judy. Thanks for letting me know I didn't have my sound on. Now I got my ear too loud. <laughs> there we go. So today we're going to be doing some quilting on the last two episodes of Fabrically Speaking Live's project. But before I do the quilting, I'm going to applique with some jean stitch thread and have you help me choose which of these two threads to use for a blanket stitch that will pop from all of the other stitches that are on this design. And I'm going to give you a little view of it. Upside down again, because <laughs> I was upside down all, all last week. That sounds funny. But what I'm meaning to say is that at shows, people would surround my table and I would always present everything right side up for them and everything was upside down for me. So I, I function well when <laughs> what I'm doing is upside down. Should you want to create this beautiful project, be sure to check out last two episodes of Fabrically Speaking Live on my YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe. And uh, so this is the jean stitch thread, thread and it's considerably heavier. It's actually the thread used to manufacture blue jeans. And so you can see how easily you can see that. And this camera is pushed back pretty far. So I'm going to give you a close up and you can see that the thread is really considerably thick. This is the thread size that I'll probably be using for quilting, which is 100 weight and you can barely see it on top of there. However, I also could use a variegated thread and variegated is very forgiving. So should you want to do free motion and you want to use a thread that's not going to show your mistakes, a variegated thread, which has lots of different colors streaming through it. It repeats the same colors. Let's see if I can give you a good glimpse of it on the close-up camera. Uh-oh. Hang on, I wanna iron, okay. So when you look at a variegated thread, the thread color, this is a, this one has purple, green, and blue going through it. So it repeats three different colors and it gives you about two inches of each color. And then it just continually repeats those three, those colors all the way through the spool. So what that does is it kind of drop, takes your eye off of one particular color. If you were to see one color thread versus the, the uh, multi, and this is 100 weight, this is 40 weight, so you see it considerably more because of its size, but this will show up less. So metallic is the one to use. I mean, not metallic. Multicolored is a good option for you should you want your stitches to show but not show as much so your mistakes don't show as much. Another thread option is to use the 100 weight Invisifil thread, which I just grabbed a spool and it fell on the floor. And this is the Invisifil thread, which I highly recommend for new free motion quilters. Oh, come on here. I got I got a something landed on my face, probably batting fuzz. You can use the Deco Bob 80 weight bobbin thread for your bobbin with any one of these threads. This thread weight is 80 weight and it works fabulous on all weights of thread. I haven't had one 
thread size where the 80 weight didn't work great and it comes in sets where you can get a combination of different colors for your bobbin and also sets where you get 12 of one particular color now one of these bobbins takes a lot longer to use up because it's 80 weight instead of 40 weight so it takes two times longer to run out of your bobbin thread than it would if you were to use a 40 weight 40 weight in your bobbin i highly recommend you use polyester thread for quilting and the reason for that is it doesn't break as easy as cotton thread. I got all these strands hanging out. Now, currently, we are in the process of relocating, as I mentioned, and we have these bobbins on a closeout price because there's some colors that don't sell as well as others. So we are closing them out for the for the move at very least probably will bring them back in stock but if you want to get a really good steel deal and learn how wonderful the deco bob bobbins are be sure to go to creativefeet.com and click on threads and go to the bobbins i'll have the link in the description below the video when i'm finished so you don't need to leave right now you can visit afterward and in the description inside of my school which is create with claire rowley i already provided you all the links in today's email that i sent out in the uh, facebook group i will take and put all that in there after the show is over i'll give you all the links to all the products that i'm using here if you're watching in youtube right below the video are all the products that i'm using today to make it easier for you so you don't have to leave you don't have to leave this is the choice. Now, which one of these two colors, because I'm not going to open a new one. Now remember, this is what's going on right now. Another really great thing that's happening is the uh, the piping rulers, the quilting wizard, they're, they're on their way to us. So even though it says we're out of stock, you can order those rulers and they'll be here soon. Also, if it looks like we're running low of any of the jean stitch thread, don't hesitate to order it also is on its way to us in addition to that is all of the quilt highlight colors that you see on our site that are showing sold out they are all also on their way to us so we'll be able to fill your order soon however because we're moving there is a possibility that there won't be a show next week and and it's Worst case scenario, we won't have creative or the uh, fabric speaking live show until April, simply because we're setting up the studio in a really good way so that I can launch Beyond the Brushstrokes, another YouTube channel, and also launch a podcast. So we're we're getting it out of my house and getting all the creative part of Creative Feet into a private studio where I can go and not be distracted by anything and uh, be able to provide you more free content so this is all very exciting and i will be moving into my own home i'll be buying a home but i have to wait so i have great friends and i'm actually going to be a roommate <laughs> at my friend's house terry the friend that's handicapped um, she also has another roommate living with her so there's going to be the three of us living together and i'm sure it will inspire content for a novel and maybe i'll give you guys a little peek into my crazy next few months as i move into the next season of my life with you and i look forward to continuing to bring you lots of fun stuff to do right now i have my ironing pad underneath this and i'm going to iron it because it's always better to start free motion quilting with a nice smooth surface and beneath this is still some of the hold light that i didn't get a chance to remove i got long strands of thread coming from everywhere i look so forward to having more organization in my studio ah oh, super exciting so if you guys were worried about me now you know there's nothing to be worried about here I'm going to 
because I, I told people I was going to be moving and a lot of people panicked. <laughs> Staying in Prescott, by the way. And there's another location where I will be doing little events like having trunk shows and there's space to have you guys bring your sewing machines and actually have me teach you. So if you are wanting to plan a vacation to Arizona and have a, a class with me, that's something that you'll be able to do now. A fun location, not where our operations will be. There we go. Because not all of what we do at Creative Feet is clean. Oh, that's too tight. Let's just do this one. So I'm basically just ironing the main body of my fabric. This is a relatively large project for my studio here. It's another thing I hope to remedy. It'd be so cool if I could teach a king size quilt and where I'm at now, there's no way I could have done that. Feel free to ask questions as I get this ready and I'm about to flip this over and remove some stabilizer that is on the back of this for the applique process. So behind here, there's that shininess. And originally I did have the shiny stabilizer, which is called Hold Light, all the way across the entire back of the fabric so that when I created the applique stitching, there was no chance that this fabric would pucker. So if you've ever done applique and you had your fabric pucker, it, it very likely was that you may have not been taught to stabilize this part of the fabric, that you just fused the two fabrics together, uh, especially if you're a self learner and didn't really have anyone to teach you. Did any of you ever, did any of you do that? Have you learned all by yourself how to do applique? Tina, <laughs> actually I am extremely organized. I just have way too much that I do and trying to put it all in one space. Such a brat. Okay, so here we go. I want you to help me choose which of these two colors of the jean stitch thread that I should use for stitching around the, the large motif in the center of this design. This pattern, by the way, is available on creativefeet.com under books and patterns or patterns. I think it has its own link. So here we go. We will do this. It's such a romantic feeling to this camera. Not very strong light. We're going to need better light than that for you to see the quilting. So which color do of these two, you can say left, right, or yellow, or green, or L. No, you can do Y for yellow and G for green. Hello, Pamela. Welcome. And let's see, did I miss anybody? So Lannis, is it Linus or Lan? No, it's probably Linus. Lene, I don't know. And Roxy Diane and Leslie G. Lots of new names here for me. I will do my best to peep it, peek in here and try to keep up, but uh, lots of wonderful people are regulars in here that will help you if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask in the chat and know that I do have a school create with where you can follow up with me after the show. So we got two greens and one yellow. I guess also it would help you to know what I'm going to quilt with on this area. Now, if it were just me all by myself, I'd probably use this, but you may not be able to see that very well when I'm quilting and I want you to see the quilting. So I may, it wouldn't be a bad idea for me to use the green and then use a green for the quilting out here in the purple. So we've got more votes for green. 
and yellow. So green wins. All right, we'll start with the applique so I can finish this off. And I did promise I would show a little bit of quilting or a little bit of applique, free motion. So once I am done with this, I'm going to save the circles and this for free motion quilting or free motion applique. Have any of you ever heard of free motion applique? Look at that, I have a green just sitting there waiting for me to select it. Except for this is 40 weight. So it's gonna it would show up a lot. I think I'm gonna lean toward because there's no way I'm gonna be able to finish this today. But I will get you going and show you cover a lot of free motion quilting techniques. And I I was like, what can I there's no better way to relax than to do free motion quilting. It's one of, it is like, oh, I can, I can go live without any preparation if I'm doing free motion quilting because it is so just calming and fun. And so if you don't feel that way about free motion, it's probably because you don't have our octi hoops or yeah, keep, you keep trying to use the older methods. Have any of you Got our Octi Hoops and haven't tried them yet. I'm trying to get this phone to not be in my way. Squirrel Jam. <laughs> That's a cute name. I am also using the 9014 Super Universal Needle for this because of the diameter of this thread. It needs a larger eye needle. Larger eye needles also having a larger groove going down the front face of the needle which will prevent the thread from shredding above the eye of the needle. I had my needle pack out. I think it's beneath this. Give me a larger piece of fabric and then I lose things, usually beneath it. What does squirrel jam mean? That's, that's, a, that's a name, isn't it? I don't know what you guys are talking about. All right, here we go. It's all right, I don't have to know what you guys are talking about. I'm, I'm just glad you have fun with each other. So this is my most used needle and here we go. You know what? After I get off of the show, make sure you guys remind me, I'm going to put the Octi hoops on sale too. So you won't need a coupon, but the price will be lower by the end of day. If any of you would were to order now and once I lower the price, well, I'll just go in there and I'll give you guys a refund for the difference. So if you don't want to wait because you're afraid you might forget. All right, because we're having a sale. I mean, I was going to have a sale. I just haven't had a chance to set it up. I had to find a location and oh my gosh, I found the perfect location. So grateful and excited signing our lease by Monday and then everything will change whenever you work with a thread that is this thick you do not want to use your automatic needle threader this is one of the times you'll use one of the needle threaders that we sell what did I do with it no here's the thing I did sewing machine repair on uh, Saturday so this is the needle threader that I use to thread these larger threads through. My hands are dry. I need to do some, use some lotion. So you can see how tiny that little wire is. And it goes all the way into even an eight needle. So if you've had trouble threading threads through hand needles or any kind, any type of needle, this, this little tiny loopy, loopy, loopity do on the end of that fits in your eye of your needle so i'm going to go in here and i use my left hand to lead it in because my brain likes to go under the thread rather than over the thread there we go so now my thread is under that hook and i just pull it through let go of the thread so that you don't create drag on it and now i got that thick thread through that.
Make sure you don't bend that threader. There we go. So if you've ever had trouble with shredding thread before and you didn't use a really thick thread and you had shredding, this might seem a little bit unnerving to you. I'm grabbing one of my Depo Bob colors. And I will be doing free motion quilting. I'm going to use the variegated thread. So what I'm going to do is use a color of the bobbin that will be hard to see. I will be using the variegated if I find it. There we go. So I want to use one of the colors that is in this. It'd also be good for you to be able to see it when I'm done. Oh, this is a great color. So this is kind of a mid-tone grays and the khaki greens, this, this khaki color, these tend to be the least or the hardest to see. So they, they blend best. So any of the grays and these and these these like uh, khaki color greens really really blend into with other colors of thread nicely. If you have these color threads in your sewing room, and this is this one blends nice with a bunch of middle tones of thread. So I'm going to use this one. Maybe I can turn up my sewing machine light for you guys. Yeah, I got to play with this variegated thread and I haven't really tested it. This is by Wonderfill. We don't have it on our site yet, but I can add this. This is Silco and I'm not really sure what this thread is made from. So uh, they sent it to me to test it. And so you're going to get to see me test it. There we go. Now that that's better lighting. So what you do, keep in mind right now, I'm not quilting. I'm going to applique, finish, just do a little blanket stitch real quick, and then we'll switch to quilting. For those of you who are here just for quilting, if you're here on the replay, you can jump ahead, remember. Why aren't you going in? Maybe I didn't put this in there very good. Oh yeah, it got moved. Ah. Took the machines apart and did service on Saturday. And when I put this together, apparently, apparently I didn't make sure the bobbin case was in there before I tightened down the screws. That's probably why I had such trouble tightening down the screws with the little doohickey they give you as a screwdriver. So I'm going to have to loosen this. Don't want to damage the bobbin case. Have any of you ever put, taken your machine apart, put it back together, and then forgot to put your bobbin case back in? So I just needed to loosen it a little bit, and now I can put my bobbin case back in. I know you ordered some green, Brenda, but I don't think you ordered the khakis. You were going for the deals. Remember, the ones that are on sale are the ones that don't sell as much. Our top sellers, we aren't discounting, as we are also in a agreement with Wonderfill to not, not reduce prices like that. So this is a... The reason we're reducing these prices is to close out certain colors. Oh, goodness. What's really cool is I will actually get up and go to work and then come home and then not be still at work. I am super excited about that.
I can't even remember which put which way to put the bobbin in right now. I'm so distracted by the move. Here we go. So we're gonna bring the bobbin thread up. And notice the feed dogs are up. This is actually we're gonna be doing applique. So I want to bring my bobbin thread up and have a good amount of a tail on it. This is only my second time doing blanket stitch with the jean stitch thread and I loved it so much on the last project. I've been wanting to do this ever since again. The stitch I'm going to use is the actual blanket stitch because I really want this stitch to be significantly higher than the satin stitch and the the little this stitch here is not really a blanket stitch this is this is actually the shell tuck stitch and I reversed it to be able to use it like a blanket stitch so deliberately because I was gonna so I have really thin really thin unnoticeable the normal satin stitch and now a blanket stitch so this particular project is going to have different levels of stitching which makes it more interesting to look at so blanket stitch I would show you my settings but I don't have a camera pointed at the screen so look in your instruction booklets for whether or not you have a blanket stitch I have a piece of thread that it won't leave. It's like, I'm not going to let go of you. Look at that. <laughs> it won't let go of me. Okay. So blanket stitch, and I'm going to go wide, as wide as I can go with it, with the satin edge foot. This is the satin edge foot. You can use whichever foot you use for blanket stitch. This is the foot that I invented for a blind person. So this is the one that I use whenever I need to be accurate. That little guide wire right there is going to fit off the edge. And then my stitch, the needle is going to come down right next to that wire, but not, not over the wire. It's going to go right next to the wire on the left hand side. That is the goal. And whenever I start a stitch, I generally try to start in an area that people's eye is less likely to go to. So you're more likely to look at the point here or up here than you are to look along the side. So I'm going to start along the side. And I have my stitch set for 4.0 wide. 4.0 on a side to side movement. Bring my needle down. And I could, it looks like I could go to 4.5 and that will vary based on your sewing machine. So bring that needle down and have a long piece of thread so that you don't have to tie a knot because this thread is so thick tying a knot is problematic. So rather than tying a knot I'll be pulling this to the back side with a hand needle. These are all the little hints. Anything purple squirrel said. <laughs> you fit in. All right, so that's, that is safe for 4.5 wide, and I'm moving my guide on the foot so that the needle touches, or the guide touches the right side of the needle. Then I know wherever that guide is, my needle will be coming down right next to it. So your focus goes off of the needle and down here at the, at the guide. Still feel like I could use more light. These are just dark colors and the camera is, I think we're making the camera feel romantic. All right, I'm looking for my glasses and they're right in front of me. And I'm using my glasses because I want to make sure I keep the fabric edge right up against the guide. But you can also kind of gently push toward the foot. I'm going to lengthen my stitch length. This is too close. I'm taking it all the way to a five on the length. So this is going to be a really big blanket stitch or spaced out. <laughs> that sounds funny. 
I'm also taking my thread tension down one entire number from 4.0 to 3.0. Because the thread is thicker, it automatically increases tension. Whenever you work with a thread that's significantly thicker, you should slow down. Don't run the machine at high speed. Give the sewing machine a little extra time to form that stitch. This is one of those times when I stop with the needle up. And I'm going to turn, lower the foot. But you can see what's going on here is my stitch is in the left swing and I need it to be in the outside swing. So what I do, rather than turning the hand wheel backward, because that's what a tempting thing for people to do is you move it out where the outside stitch would go. And I got, I got my thread off of the guide pin, pull the th slack back on the thread, not just here, but also above the tension so that you don't have any loops on top. And I'm gonna do a stitch now my needle has swung over now i can move it over this is the little uh process that you have to do with a blanket stitch to get all your stitches to line up the way you want now once that is down i'm gonna do one stitch and see okay it's going forward the thing about the blanket stitch is it moves in more than one direction and this thread is going to really stand out so you want to make this as pretty as possible I don't know how much sleep I've gotten since Friday or since Saturday, but it isn't much. So now once again, I got my needle out and it's fine. I'm actually perfectly in line with the point. And this is going to be an element that stands out or the, the three points will come together. Now I'm going to lift and go back. I don't usually say I'm going to. I'm going to do this. I'm, I'm doing it. <laughs> Questioning my speech. What did Amy say? She teasing me again. Cameras don't have feelings. What did I say? Well, Amy's feeling better today. <laughs> By the way, I did complete recording the audible, the actual verbal part of my audible book for my Beyond the Brushstroke, Brushstrokes novel. Now that doesn't mean that my audible book is ready to buy. It's not. So see how sometimes you have to just do several stitches in the same spot. Isn't that incredible how thick that looks? It looks like you hand did that with some yarn instead of thread. So I'm gonna lower the needle, lift and swing. Now my focus goes back on the guide and it's so easy once you get past the points of where you have to be detailed, but don't go fast. Let that thread have time. And I may even have to Decrease my top thread tension a little bit more. We get caught on something. Yeah, going down a little bit more on the thread tension. Go slow. Take your time. So I've been wanting to move and put it off. And then my landlord just uh, decided she just has to come back. And I've been renting for a while, waiting to purchase again. So that's why I haven't slept much in the last week. Now I'm going to actually let this go along the outside of that just to give it a, a nice look. That's the stitch that it would be doing front and back, but I just let it do that one stitch over because it was lined up perfectly with it. So I'm gonna lift and swing it around and 
pick it up from there and if it goes forward we're good to go yeah so there we go go slow take your time and i'm not able to watch the chat so have fun have fun picking on me if if you guys are doing that <laughs> Know that when I say something, if you're new to the live, that I don't see your response until a while after I have already moved on and said a whole bunch of other things. So feel free to ask questions. And if I don't answer you right away, just feel free to ask again. I won't be offended. And if I don't answer you right away, that's why, because I'm actually watching what I'm doing, not watching the chat. If I, if I had two sets of eyes, it would be different. So see how slow that's going? It's pretty slow. Now, once again, I am right along the edge of that. So I can use the sides to side because this is the thing about a blanket stitch is when you set a width for the stitch, whatever the, whatever the width is whatever it goes side to side the same length is used so it's exactly the same millimeters side to side and front to back and so this side to side one is perfect for the center of the point i'm gonna lift it i just i just love the look of that thread and then the other thing I like about the jean stitch thread is it's muted. It doesn't have the same sheen as the as that embroidery thread. This one shines. This one is soft and light doesn't reflect against it. And it's polyester, so it's super strong, but it's also very soft. It's, it's a very, a very, <laughs> it is a unique thread unto itself. A lot of you have bought it over the last year or so what do you guys think have you guys used it have you played around with it feels good to just be quiet for a minute are any of you disappointed i'm not on the quilting part if you are know that i'm about as soon as i'm done with this i'm switching to quilting this is a good time to ask questions about free motion because I'm about to have to take the stabilizer off the back, which will take a little while. If you're wondering why I'm not lowering the needle when I make these turns, it's because of a blanket stitch going front and back and side to side can, uh, you're gonna end up having to raise that needle anyway. And a lot of times when we turn our hand wheel to make stitches, you can accidentally go back and have the thread fall off the take up lever that is up inside the machine that part that goes up and down and then it can slip off of there and then you get big giant loops on the back instead of a nice stitch that bird nest look that people get yeah if, if i can i think i know where the other item I use this on is so that you guys can see another project that I used it on. I'm going to lower the needle this time. And the only time I lower the needle on a blanket stitch is when it's on the outside, not when it's on the inside. These are the things you try to remember. If you don't remember, well, you'll learn how to rip out blanket stitching. <laughs> okay, so... This is the first shredding I got, and it's the very last stitch. Pull this out. Be nice to that needle. This is thick thread, so I kind of push it down to get that thread to come out. Got to have a long enough piece to put it through the hand needle. Uh, 
<laughs> Does your magnetic pin cushion look like mine? <laughs> it's a magnetic, I put anything metal on it guide. So what I'm looking for, and I tend to toss my hand sewing needles on it, rather than put them away where they should be put. But I always know where they are. They're sitting here. Lots of double needles that I didn't put away. But if they're on this, it means they're good enough to use. If I find a, a hand or a sewing machine needle on my magnetic pin cushion, it's because I barely used it and it's a good needle. So I'll just use... I'll just use this one. Your what does what a lot? I totally forgot what I said again. This is how I handle threads like this. Fold it instead. I am not a hand sewer. So if any of you are, I apologize for not being as good as you at it. And then I'm going to go ahead and take that thread where it should have been or its next stitch. Push it through. Now I'm going to do the same thing again with this thread. And that is how we tie off. I'll be able to tie a knot beneath this. Now we have no knot and nice thick thread and I'm going to go ahead and switch cameras and talk to you while I remove the hold light that's beneath it. Isn't that cool? As I look around and see so many things I have to move. <laughs> I'm getting a little bit distracted by it. My mind is going, okay, so we should do that with that and this with that while teaching you. It is the process of pulling through ends of thread for all thicknesses. You can, and actually that is what those that are really trying to win awards at shows, that's how they quilt too. They always take the, the ends of the threads and pull them to the back so there's never a knot. And then you don't cut these really short on the back side because as your fabric stretches, and I'm doing this on purpose, as it stretches, you can hear the hold light starting to separate from the fabric. I'm crossing, I'm going across the bias and this breaks, this breaks the, uh, the hold of the hold light onto the fabric around the stitches as well. I'm going to go ahead and switch to the up the top camera so you can see the back side. Top. You moved your sewing room to another room. That was hard. You know what? I, I really do. I'm looking so forward to organizing things differently. Because these two ends came together at a, right next to each other, which they would at any time with any kind of thread, I'm going to go ahead and tie those two into a knot, a double knot. And I'm still not going to cut it short because now I don't have to worry about... A lot of times people don't realize that when their fabric stretches, and it does if you're making a quilt that's going to go on a bed, people sit on it. And, and when they sit on it, it causes the fabric to stretch and can break your thread. Once again, I'm peeling off and see how nice and that cleanly comes off. But on the blanket stitches, it's a little bit more work. The Appliquick tweezers make it a lot easier. Now this is going to be a, a tabletop type placemat and if I'm not going to quilt inside of the applique, I could leave that 
and it's a little bit waterproof as well except for the hold light has a crunchy sound so you wouldn't want to leave it in something if you don't want it to sound like that when you move it around yeah right now every time I need to grab something I have to go around something the, the space in here is smaller the next studio was three times the size of my space and so I'm my desire is to have three sets set up all the time and just move my cameras around so I can do three different types of video content for you guys with one set of cameras what is on your sewing table so just so that you don't have to go crazy waiting for me to remove all of this I'm just going to leave it in the stitching and I'm only going to be doing free motion out here but know that if I weren't live and having to worry about driving you guys crazy as you wait for me I would take the time to remove all of the hold light in this project And just so you know, I did actually stitch only half of this last week. So I did stitch. I did work on this. So there we go. No one's going to know the whole light is in there. I removed it from this area because when you free motion applique, you don't need any stabilizer. This is the batting that I'm using. This is the bamboo batting which we are stocked up on. If you have, uh, oh. tell you what, I will also do a 10% discount on the bamboo batting today. As soon as I get off, I'll price the battings at a, or I'll get, I don't know. I'll figure out how I'm going to do it. I may give you a coupon code for the 10% off. Hi, Ellen. How are you? I don't think you were on last week. Were you, or was it just me not remembering everything? I know Carlene wasn't here and here she is again, not here. I'm hoping this batting is cut the right size. And why I'm having so much trouble with it is because of the static cling in the batting. It holds the fabric so well that it's kind of hard to get it positioned. Where am I? Where's the camera? So I got too many camera angles now. Generally, I like to always have my batting be go outside of the think of it think of the top of your bat of your design or your project as the border of your project because because it is and I I like to have the back fabric extending out past the border of the top and also have the back be past the batting as well. So this is, a, this is, this is too small of a batting for this. If I think of it that way, but I can also cut this down to size and then put my backing on afterward. Try to see if I have a batting big enough. This one looks like a better fit. Oh, you missed the uh, 
The sewing machine repair. Oh, teaching were you? I like this batting so much, but it likes me too much. This is what gets in my eyelashes and stuff. Static cling. <laughs> I'm going to try to get the fabric and the batting lined up. Have you guys used the batting and found how high the static cling is? Or is it just Arizona that makes it more clingy? I wish I could hear you talk. I need a, I need a nap. <laughs> Come on. Bigger objects are so challenging in this space that I have. I may have a camera set up over a table in the studio, the new studio, so that I can work with larger pieces and not fumble so much. I have the perfect table for this. Come on, Claire. Oh, the static clean. Another thing about bamboo batting is it stretches along with the fabric. Once you have it smoothed out and where you want it, it's not going anywhere. So you don't have to go out and get your safety pins and safety pin everywhere. And I'm going to trim this down a little bit smaller. So I just want to make sure that I've got it a good distance from both sides. And here we go. So try not to be bummed out that if I'm not live next week, but know that I'm going to try. If nothing else, go live and kind of just hang out with you guys for a little bit so you guys can interact with one another because I know how much you miss each other when you don't, when I'm not live on Thursdays, but we'll see. I just don't want to make any promises. I'm going to back it afterward because I'm not putting you through waiting for me to do that. Should I? The back. We started, we started getting ready to move. So if I unfold my stuff to do this i'll i'll be mad at myself you wish you could help me move uh -huh. so sweet i'm being very supported by people right now on uh the move and everything this is, i feel quite blessed so i'm removing the presser foot and i'm doing so not to put another foot on because the creative feet make it so that you don't have to use a foot. So if you've ever done free motion and you've used a free motion foot, you can by all means go ahead and do so with the octa hoops, but you don't have to. That's the wrong camera. <laughs> Get everything ready here. All right, lights. 
Okay, come on, Claire, don't be sleepy. There we go. I'm putting this in the needle and removing the jean stitch thread. And I do so with the foot raised, that opens the tension disc. Then I pull the thread out of the needle. And because the jean stitch thread is so thick, I'm actually, I'm actually going to kind of pull it out of the machine too. So as I'm, instead of pulling it through the machine, I'm unwrapping it, un going backwards on the threading process. That will eliminate, because it is such a thick thread and it's soft and fuzzy, it'll eliminate pieces of it maybe breaking off and getting between your tension discs. And here it's it's not coming, it's not coming out. So I'm unwrapping the other way and now I can pull and it comes out. Success. Yeah, I'm just going to do a little quilting and then bid you adieu until I move. Till the move is over. Know that I will miss you guys. I've got so many threads coming from every direction right now. That one seemed attached to that. So as I mentioned, I'm not sure what kind of thread this is. It feels a little synthetic-y. And it says Silco. So I don't know if it's got a silicone coating on it, but if it does, well, that'll make it glide through the needle even easier. I'll have to look it up. They sent it to me to test. And they count on me to do the research. Emma. Spray basting forces you to use a needle. I mean, to use a, a foot. Because the needle will then have a harder time exiting the fabric. So when I realized all the spray basting and all of the fusible battings were forcing me to use a foot, I stopped. Considering the bamboo batting has such high static cling, it really doesn't need the help. But if you feel that there's just no way you're gonna trust that these aren't gonna shift on you, then use the liquid-based glue, which is water-soluble stabilizer in a bottle instead, and just pull back the batting from the top of the fabric. And actually that's a better way to lay out everything is to have your top piece of fabric folded in half. Start from the middle and just put little drops for every safety pin you would be getting out to, to a safety pin. So if you pin, if you would pin every four inches, well place a dot every four inches. So you can do like a grid and then you just slide your finger over the top to, to take that little drop and make it a smoothed out little piece of uh, water soluble stabilizer. And while it's damp, it will adhere itself to the fabric. So the batting and the fabric will become one. Don't put this on the fabric and then put the batting on it because you're more likely to have a little wet spot showing through if you do that. I'm, I'm so excited about moving. <laughs> so. All right, here we go. What am I going to use for quilting? I'm going to use the Octi Hoops. The Octi Hoops are products that I created to make it so everybody could do free motion. And uh, they're a little bit odd shape because the octagon shape, if you haven't seen them before, they might seem very foreign to you, but mathematically an octagon has the same angle in every corner. So you can bring the corners of these Octi Hoops into one another. And then because of that, you can spin them around and they stay connected without having to clamp down your fabric in between the two rings and no tightening a screw only to have it, you know, lose its threading. We're not going to be using three at the same time for this on quilting. We use two frames at the same time. 
I use the two smaller ones. And because my hand is small on the smallest frame is the best one for me because we also use a little handle and this handle I gotta not complain about it when when the batting is flying through the air so here's the little handle that I'm talking about and it goes into the holes of the top frame This frame will be hidden beneath your quilt. This one will be on top, invisible, and you will drop it, and then it seats inside of this frame, so you can't hit this frame with your needle. Underneath, you won't be able to see that one, but you can feel it, and this is how I bring my fingers together, and then I can spin them around, and I can become completely mindless of this hand. And then I just focus on this hand. This hand rests on the bottom frame, just as I would normally put my hand down to write with a pen. I put my hand down on the bottom frame. And then everything moves and nothing is actually connected to anything. This one goes underneath. Can't see it. Top frame drops in. Now you can feel it. And once you're in that position, I'm gonna take this ironing pad out. Your sewing machine is nice and slippery. And it just, it, it actually will let you spin around in any direction, but I have a lot more fabric than I like. This is really large and I'm very likely to have a harder time with it because of that. So what I do is take and roll my fabric up now you can roll it with the batting side facing up or you can roll it with the fabric and have less batting flying through the air so just doing a roll and you may have had you may have bought things for this bicycle clips or other things what i like to use to control the roll <laughs> if only i could do something to control that roll <laughs> I'm super excited because where I'll be living for the next few months has a gym and a pool and I'm going to feel like I'm on vacation because I'm not, I can't do work at, at my house. Oh my goodness. This was all my daughter's idea. You need to live somewhere where you can't work while you're waiting to buy your house. She, she's always got my best interests at heart. She wants me to have some fun. So I've taken, hold the elastic down so that you're not pinning through the raw edge of the elastic these are quiltlets that's what i call them we sell them at creative feet under supplies link and uh and then you just take the safety pin and poke it through and feel beneath so i put my finger and it's touching the batting so i know that if i pin where my finger is, of course, remove your finger before you pin. <laughs> then I'm through. I now flip it over and then take the elastic strap and come over. Once again, fold it so that your elastic lasts longer. And then come back to the top, keeping the safety pin in line with that. I twisted the elastic. Don't want that. Want to make sure you keep your elastic knot from getting twisted. There we go. And that's just because you might, it might like irritate your skin. And then you're going to wear your quilt. Totally different than every other method, right? Have any of you tried this yet? Have you done your octi hoops with the loop de loops? No, this, this is really not glue, Brenda. The liquid based is a water soluble stabilizer. So just as any water soluble stabilizer dries and is able to be sewn through, the same is true of the liquid based glue when you use it. 
to secure fabrics to one another. And I can't believe you don't know that <laughs> because I use the liquid base so much. But calling it a glue can be confusing. It's really just wet water soluble stabilizer. Once the water evaporates, you're left with a water soluble stabilizer. I'm going to do the same roll now on the other side. So I'm, like, I'm going to be wearing this quilt on both arms. Rolling it up. Because I'm going to applique without a foot over here. So I want to make sure that I have the roll stopping so that I can go all the way to the point. And once again, grab a couple more quiltlets. So basically what we sell you in the quiltlet set is 20 elastic straps so that you can tie down a king size quilt like this. And you would section, you section off or when you do your safety pinning, you want to make sure that you're parallel or in line with the other elastic strap. So this is where I want it to be on the roll. You have, Amy? I use these a lot, you guys. I mean, why bother with fabric that's and you feel like you have to keep moving your fabric and moving your fabric, this eliminates that anytime for anything. Embroidery, garment sewing, anything. Once again, you take and bring your elastic around. Make sure you don't that you don't twist it as you bring it around. Find the tip of the pin. And you pin it closed. One more strap, making sure again that I am, that I'm not like shifting, that I don't have this elastic strap up higher than this elastic strap. They should be in line. That'll keep this from happening. Three fourteen hour and 14 minutes. Fabrically Speaking Live is supposed to be a one hour show. It is a two hour show. Yes, the hard bicycle clips that people use. Yes. The problem with a, a clip that is not last elastic or stretchy is that as one side of your quilt, when as you roll across the surface, one side of that roll will become smaller and the other side becomes thicker. And eventually your bicycle clips can't be used on the side that's thinner. So this can be used all the way up to the very end of your quilting process. All of a sudden I'm hungry. Here's the thing though, I don't need to eat. I think I'm just burning more energy as I'm stressing out about moving. All right, we are ready. As long as I didn't twist this one, because I did it upside down. I twisted it. What are you guys making for dinner? Every time someone says, I like it, I hear this song in my head. I like it like that, or I can't remember what the song is, but I get a rhythm in my head immediately. No twisting. Anything you do that causes a distraction when you're sewing, especially with free motion, can make it harder for you to maintain. 
I had no trouble with the other three. I keep twisting this one. Do you guys know what song I'm hearing in my head? Holy moly. That reminds me of Rosa from Appliquick. What does holy moly mean? Why do you guys say it? Because she's from Spain. Done. All right. Put my quiltlets away. It's not the chicken dance, that's for sure. Chicken chow mein. I need food tonight. Stuffed peppers, braised short ribs. Ooh, now I'm really getting hungry. Why'd I ask? <laughs> PB and J, Amy, how old are you? <sighs> close camera, close camera. So I'm going to remove the foot. Remove, I already removed the foot. Instead of removing the, now I'm going to remove the snap on adapter is what I mean to say. Those of you who have Bernina machines, you won't have any shank at all. There's nothing in your way. You can really see what you're doing. I think I even did some of free motion with the jean stitch thread on one of my videos. Pretty sure I did. Now I'm sliding that roll under there so that I don't bend the needle. I don't know this is right side up and everything, but this is farther away from me. So I'm going to spin it around because it's free motion. And you can see it better now that way as well, right? Now remember, the larger the two frames goes beneath the quilt. So I'm going to take it and slide it right beneath. And now it's lifting up and supporting the quilt instead of the quilt being pushed against against the machine it's raised up and floating over the bed of the machine the back fabric then does not get pinched and i really would have back fabric on here this time because i want i want to have whenever i make a table runner i like to have the tap all three layers stitched all the way across it just lays nicer washes better and i have some of these placemats that i've quilted this way that are six seven eight years old and they still have the same amount of loft the batting doesn't go away like cotton batting does too much on my table the next thing is introducing the handle into the top frame Then the positioning that I do is I use these little pillows. This is the bolster pillow pattern that you find inside of the school, Create with Claire Rowley. The link to the school is in the description below the video. And I have two different sizes because I have two different lengths of arms. So this, this is, whichever one is tallest goes under this arm because it's shorter. The other elbow gets the other one. In that pattern, you can make a variety of different sizes. And what it does for you is it makes it so you can rest your arm on the table without hurting the elbow. If you've ever made your elbow sore from doing a lot of detailed work with your elbows resting on the table or have your arm resting along the edge of the table, you're cutting off blood supply, you're causing tissue damage. So it's all, it's all about feeling really good as you quilt so you can quilt longer and also feeling really good so you're not hurting yourself permanently so you don't ever have to stop quilting this is about sustainability on your fabrics using the right needle the right fabrics the right batting if you use cotton batting it will rot away bamboo doesn't seem to rot away neither does polyester and so if you use 80 percent bamboo and 20 percent cotton 20% will dis will disappear and you'll be left with 80%. So you're paying for stuff you don't need. I like it. I like it. I like it. Yeah, that's it. 
I like the way you put your fingers through my hair. Oh, I don't think that was it. Was it that? I'm gonna... <laughs> I'm gonna have to look that up after the show. I don't want to embarrass myself. That's funny. If that's it, that's... That's it. That's pretty funny. Elbows down, shoulders relax. Gotta get my cell phone out of it, out of the way. Elbows down, shoulders relaxed. Oh, yay, I get to quilt. It took all this time. Lower the foot. A lot of uh, batting fuzz here. That's the one thing I don't like about filming with dark fabric. It's either the, it's either the batting or the dog. Bring up your bobbin thread. Now, these are little tiny circles and spinning your fabric around little tiny circles would is a lot harder than than doing what I'm about to do. I stitched in the wrong spot. So, oh, that's why I couldn't figure out where my needle was coming down because it was in a, it was still using the blanket stitch. And I'm going to bring up my bobbin thread one more time. Sure. There we go. Today is sound effects day. That came out really easy. What was that? Oh, no. Everything's fine. I'm going to take my tension down again to 3.0 from 4.0, which is one full tension setting and now instead of using a blanket stitch, I'm going to move the fabric in a blanket stitch pattern. So this is basically blanket stitch by free motion. And it's not as easy for me to do this while talking. So I will do my best to talk. And I'm testing a thread I've never used before. This is very brave of me to do that. So this is a really tiny little blanket stitch, but it's not, it's just a straight stitch. And I'm going slow, take my time, elbows down, shoulders relax, relax your muscles. This is why I love octahoop time because it's, it's a very relaxing process. Now, you can bring we're gonna bring that thread to the bottom again like before with a hand sewing needle because this this is an item that would be washed a lot isn't that something now if you don't think you can do a blanket stitch free motion it's a it's an l l l l l l so if you can draw an l then you can draw an l Just made that a little shorter. Okay, now I'm going to pull out the thread and hop over to the next one. And once you have the bobbin connected to the back side, now I can kind of pull the quilt away from me. And what it just did was it just took some of that needle thread and put it to the bottom. So it's already down there. I don't have to do that later. A little trick. And I'm going to cut this thread in the halfway point. So it is two threads. Come on, get over there. Got to pull it again. Oh, I'll just show you. Oh, my phone just started ringing and scared the living daylights out of me. It's probably just a junk call. Try this again. So this is another way of pulling your thread to the backside. So you do one, one full stitch rotation and then start to pull it away. With a tweezer, you go under here and you grab your bobbin thread. 
it's about teaching you. And see how the needle thread is see how the needle thread is now a loop down there. So I didn't have to use the hand needle to get my needle thread beneath. Saves you a lot of time later on. Except for that doesn't work when you have the hoop gone, the hoop out of there. Now, if you're really talented and you really take your time, you could do a zigzag stitch around this, but it also takes longer. So instead of bringing that bobbin thread up, we want to keep it down. This is another thing I do. I go, I do a few stitches along the border and come back over it. So to make another look of a blanket stitch is what I'm showing you. You just stitch around the circle. It's a lot easier on your brain. So after you stitch around the circle, now you're going to go one direction. So come over and hop up, come over and hop up. So you no longer have to go backward. You're able to move in a forward moving motion. Does that make sense to you? Because a blanket stitch has two rows of stitches on the outside of its pattern, you either have to go forward and back or you go around once and then come back around once and you're only having to go back and forth on the stitch that goes into the applique piece. And we can come away from here and I can come back a little and now I don't have to pull that stitch beneath because I've tied a knot. So no more having to worry about pulling that through afterward. And that's how I like to do it the most. Now I have this stitch is still connected to the bobbin thread beneath. So you raise the foot and now the bobbin thread is still connected. We do not have to remove or cut that bobbin thread. Now we can just go around and I'll do it without talking and you'll see how much faster it is. And I'm also not looking at the sewing machine needle. What I look at is ahead of where I'm going. I look where I'm headed. Just like you look where you're headed when you walk or you trip. Look where you're headed. Always keep your head up when you walk. So we don't hear about you on the news falling face forward down some stairs or something. Keep your chin up. Look down with your eyes. So now I'm able to go back and forth and much, much quicker, easier. Each stitch I made a little bit bigger to show you that you can vary how big or how large your blanket stitch appears. Raise the foot. We don't have to cut anything. Just hop over. Raising the foot gives you slack on the thread so that you don't bend your needle. And now I started in the wrong spot. So I'm going to cut it. Yep, there we go. Saved that. Raise the foot, pull out the needle thread. Bobbin thread is still connected. So we are officially secure. Yes, yeah, so we go around the outside. And actually, I'm going to do a totally different thing on the, the next shapes. Coming around. Going around, and I pass the area that I started. And that's how you're getting a knot. And now, one stitch over. Slow down. Don't, don't rush your movement. Don't rush your hands. When I come over, if I do one, come up, go do one more stitch, come over, come up, do one more stitch, come over. Then you don't get little V's, you get more straight lines. Cut that thread because I don't need to worry about tying it off. It's a little bit longer. Was I blocking anything because I was not looking at the camera view? Try to keep my hand out of there. So 
one stitch over and do another little stitch so it's just a tiny movement that prevents the the next stitch from coming out and you, you could actually do it just like this one and then move it and then do one and then hop up and go one you don't have to move as fast as i'm doing learn learn the movement so it's a very slow process but when you're done feel faster than using a foot because you don't have to keep stopping and turning the fabric it is definitely easier on these little circles to do that i could add a sequin on each one of these and do it free motion just like i just did with the liquid based glue holding the sequins down as well which I've done in other episodes of Fabrically Speaking Live, showing you how you can do that kind of thing. Now I'm going to move all the way from here to this circle. So I'm going to pull that thread out to make it easier. And that bobbin thread, once again, is still connected, and the bobbin thread is a lot shorter. Here we go. Go around the circle. If any of you ever bought a pattern and they have the fabrics already cut and they're already fused and you just iron them down and then you're supposed to stitch around them, this is the easiest way to stitch around all of those shapes. I'm not wearing my quilt. I've been working too hard. This hand's starting to get a little sore, but I haven't been wearing the quilt. Oh, what a difference. I totally forgot to put my quiltlets on. See, even I can mess up. And as we go around, now we're doing the letter L real slow. Hop over, do a stitch, hop up, hop back, hop up, do a stitch, hop up, come back. And then, you know, choose the size. That's too big. I should have done a smaller. I'm going to be quiet because I'm better at this when I'm quiet. I love the, uh, I always want to call it metallic. The, um, what's it called, this thread? Variegated. I love the variegated for blanket stitch applique. I'm really liking this, how it's changing. It's really kind of cool. I'm going back to one stitch at a time. I, I'm tired today. But what I think I'm seeing is I think I seen, I'm seeing my bobbin thread come up. Yeah, the thread fell off the thread stand. And that's why we like to use a bobbin thread that blends with the needle thread. So you're not likely to see your mistake. And there we go. That's tied off. Now I can actually cut. And we're on to the other shape. So in this pattern, I'm using several different applique techniques. And so why not do a straight stitch applique stitch on this one? Why not? We're doing all of them. May as well show you that. Yes, I'm about to switch to quilting out here with the, with the variegated thread. So now instead of, and my bobbin thread is short, see how, so it doesn't want to make a knot. Bring that bobbin thread up, pull it out long. Then we can do a stitch with the needle, pull it away, grab beneath the fabric, and pull both your needle and bobbin thread through to the back side. Easier to do it before you start stitching than to put it in a needle and hand or a hand needle and bring it down. So now my needle and bobbin thread are both down there. And what I'm doing now is I'm I'm gonna stitch on the fabric on that little piece. So if you have a pattern, if you buy a, a kit and the fabrics are all cut and they're all fused, a lot of times this, the the designs or the shapes are so small. There's no way you can even 
use a zigzag stitch because when the shapes get to the point where they're this close together you will lose the fabric from showing so this is a really nice option just using a straight stitch remember all i've been doing today is a straight stitch i just move the hoop in a blanket blanket stitch uh, motion i have not lowered my feed dies i'm going to do that now so that uh so that you know you can and remember you can use a foot if you like and you just scoot around scoot the bottom frame when you need to adjust the quilt. Then you reposition the top frame and that's how you progress a cost without having to re redo anything. So there's no, there's no real hooping. It's not really attached. It's just sitting here on top and the bottom frame is beneath it. It's a lot easier than you think, but when you first try it, it, it can seem really strange. Now, to just really ensure that this piece will go through the laundry and, and stay, I'm going to go around twice. And when you don't talk, and as you saw, and I'm trying to teach, so I'm using different places in my brain. Now, this is super, super fast to just go around and do a straight stitch. I never tie knots at points. I always come in a little bit. And then just go back and forth a little bit and there we go hopping over to the next one and then i'm going to quilt so i'm i am quilting but i'm applique quilting right now because i can cutting that thread short because it's tied off correctly still only have one that has to go through a needle and that's the first one I started. So I've shown you a couple different ways of not having to tie a knot. Lost my pillow. It just rolled off the table. I can't see it. All right. Got my magnifying glasses on. Can't see. <laughs> what was that? I had something on the bed of the machine that just dropped off. Oh, my tweezers. Okay. Once again, I haven't been wearing my quilt and at least wearing it in your left hand seems to be easier. You don't have, I have a stronger right hand than my left hand, but my left arm is just messed up from when I broke it. Lower the foot. Once again, we are free motion quilt appliqueing. And it just started pulling that bobbin thread under. I'm trying to find my tweezers. I'm going to need them. There they are. Then grab from beneath and find your bobbin. Pull on it. And it, it'll take your needle thread beneath. So that's the goal. Find your bobbin. Don't bend your needle. I had the needle grabbed. Where's that bobbin? It's difficult because my bobbin thread, I didn't cut the bobbin thread first, and so I'm having trouble finding it. We'll just do it right so you can see. So this is the bobbin thread that was trying to pull. But honestly, because I'm using a straight stitch, just doing some stitches forward and back is adequate to secure this from ever coming out so I can then cut it and I don't have to bring the bobbin thread up as long as the stitch is forming the bobbin thread can be left under there and not brought up so again I'm going to wear my quilt this time put the quiltlet on and wear it like a bracelet that's why I call them quiltlets they're bracelets for quilting It's 
stay on the fabric, Claire. So this is me talking to myself, helping myself remember what I'm doing, especially when I do a variety of different things. Bringing the corners together. And then I can just focus on steering with a little handle here. Elbows down, shoulders relax, take your time, there's no rush. This is the 9014 Super Universal Needle by Schmetz, and it is the most forgiving of all needles for free motion quilting. It's so amazing. So now, because I did on the other one, I'm going to go around again. It also just makes it so I can launder this and not worry about that fabric shredding or fraying on the edges. Elbows down, shoulders relaxed. Take your time. Almost done. And then I'm going to quilt. Just do the quilting, quilting. And I have no real plan here on what I want to do on the quilting. So this will be a good time for you guys to suggest. Would you like me to do some pebbles? Would you like me to echo quilt around this, which is basically mirroring or following the design and going around? I'm actually going to do that on this first one. I'm going to outline the entire project, but not, not right along the edge, but inside. So I want to start in a safe place. I want to start Start in an area where it's not going to be as obvious. And I'm going to go ahead because this is not an award winning quilt, but see, I just did one complete stitch. I went forward, back, forward, back. And one more time stitching through the, through those two stitches. And now I can come out and I'm looking about how far away I am from that piece. Hoping you guys are able to see this stark fabric. You are the stitch length adjustment. I'm actually going to just echo quilt around this particular shape. Because we are running out of time, so I'm going to limit what I do. Scooting. Scooting is you push the bottom frame where you want to go. So now I've just done a little stitch that looks like that. And I could actually go in the middle. I could do like little, want me to do that? The idea of free motion is to try to tie as few knots as possible. Boy, did I not say that very well. Swirls of what kind? I, I'm too tired to make major decisions on this. So, let's cut that off. Thinking about how cute this design is. I hope I don't regret that. There we go. Don't forget, always if you're if you're doing something on one side of a design that's re, that's the same on the other, do the same thing on the other before you move on to something else. So you don't forget. How much better I am when I don't talk?
meandering, uh, another word for like stippling. Stippling and meandering is basically you really don't know what you're doing and you're just stitching around. And since this is such a deliberate type of design, it has such you know uniformity to it. I hesitate to just do that. However, so I could I could come around and do like a, a diamond kind of thing, but do I have room to do that there? Can I do it here? And I could, if I do this, and I kind of like this thought that I have in my head. So picking up the wheel, they kind of look like wheels, don't they? I'm going to come out and come back. Come up, come back again. And now we've made a cool little design. And I'm going to hop over and do the same thing on this one. Come up. And come back. Now, if you are not the kind of person that likes to just wing it like this, just kind of play, then you would need to draw. And you could take, and on this, you could take a chalk pen and draw your shapes first. Or if you have a light color fabric, you could trace using the Caterpillar light tablets. But I kind of like this. It reminds me of doodling on a piece of paper. I don't really know what I'm going to do. But I'll tell you what, if each one of these petals has the green show up in the middle, I look like I really knew what I was doing. <laughs> it is. Seriously, green, green, green in the middle of each one of these little kind of they look like bird beaks. A double bird beak. <laughs> Tie a knot. And I'll hop over and do it again. That one didn't have green in the middle. It has a little bit. if I can show you what I did better and move to the bottom where I won't care and I can do some swirly stuff for you. You see that? It's so dark. See, this is the problem. This is why I don't usually use a lot of dark fabrics when I teach. The camera has a hard time with it. Let's see what it looks like on the top camera. So see how I did that little doop 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 and these have some consistency to them. So if I just kind of meander right now, I will be going out of character of the design. Now I'm going to do some stitching down here. But I don't want to do a lot of it with the batting only on the back because I want to anchor this with the batting. So I'm going to pull away those so that you can see because it's hard to see what I'm doing when it's, the camera is this tight. And make it so you can see more of the table. Oh, I just messed up the tight camera. Here we go. And I have all this equipment in front of me, which, which makes it harder. And cameras and wires and stuff up here. So I haven't been able to show you how I would handle a king size quilt in answer to your question, Cheryl. But these elastic straps, and you can always replay and go back after I'm done with the live to see what this is all about. These are elastic straps that you wear 
So if your quilt is larger, you're not holding the quilt. You move your arms and the quilt moves with you. And on a larger quilt, you would use more straps going up and down the quilt and make sure there's nothing on your table that interferes. The bottom frame and top frame are used simultaneously. The bottom frame is beneath, top frame's on top. And so I'm gonna do a little of that and I'm gonna move this over so I can actually function like I would normally. So you don't see me use improper posture. Take and slide your quilt beneath. And this is about uh, five, four and a half feet. I think it's, I think it's four feet wide. But you can go wider than that. I've done a twin size bed so far on it. But I have a king size quilt I've been making with the intention of free motion quilting on it when I'm finished. So now we're moving creative feet, moving the studio to another location. And I'm going to try to hook up everything so that I can actually do this without knocking things over and do my best to show you how I can do a king size quilt where you can actually see what I'm doing because cameras can only capture a specific spot. It's kind of hard for you to see the entire, you can't see me, you can't see the entire quilt while also seeing the needle. So that's what makes it problematic. So this is the concept and this is what I do for larger quilts is these elastic straps, we sell 20, you can use any elastic you want. Just make sure it feels good to your skin because you're gonna wear the quilt and you can position elastic straps every eight inches, but whatever you do on this side, you do the same thing on that side and have them be parallel to one another because otherwise you'll twist the quilt. The bottom frame goes underneath the quilt to raise the quilt up above the bed of the machine. Top frame drops in. And at the close of this live, which we are on my brother Charles, who passed away when uh, 35 years ago, it's his birthday today. So it is March 9th of 2023. And a little bit of batting got stuck on my needle threader. When this show is over, I'm going to I'm going to do a, a uh, discount on the Octi hoops and the bamboo batting. I think what I'm going to do is just have it be the members discount. So you type in mem member, M E M B E R, and you should always try entering that coupon because I try to use that coupon and it changes. So what this coupon is going to do for you is going to give you 10% off of the Octi Hoops and it's going to give you 10% off of the bamboo batting today. Then find your way to the bobbins area because the bobbins, well, they are priced already discounted. Your coupon will not take a discount on the bobbins in addition to the discount that's already on the discounted bobbins. It'll only be, the 10% will only apply to the Octi Hoops and the batting today. However, like I said, there are discounted bobbins right now. And I'll, I'll make a comment in the description after the close. So you guys, if you're having trouble remembering what I'm saying, you'll be able to remember. So I wear the quilt and I wear the quilt. And I then decide what it is I want to quilt. Make sure you're not laying on the quilt. That's a very common mistake. People go, I can't get the quilt to move. And I go, well, where are your arms? And then they go, oh, I'm laying on it. <laughs> That's why it won't move. So you kind of want to pull the quilt out from your beneath your arm and your pinky rests on the bottom frame that's down there. Now you just decide what you want to do. And I want to make sure I do something I like. So what am I going to do? I like to know what I'm going to do before I start. And you should as well, because just like you we drive down in a major city and you don't know where you're going and you just start driving, will you get where you want to be, you have to know where you want to be first. So know what you want to do. I'm going to keep it in a, because this design is a swirly design. However, the bottom here is not. So I could echo down using the same tri triangular shapes. But I just want you to see from a distance what I'm going to do. And I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to try 
to do that. We'll see how well I do. And I'll switch to the closer camera in a minute. This is about you seeing what I'm doing. Seeing me carry the quilt with the quilt lids. The bobbin thread is too short, not coming up. So get that bobbin thread up. There we go. Now I do one stitch and then I pull the quilt and it pulls the bobbin and needle thread to the back side. So I will not have a knot at this spot. That, I rhymed without trying. And if you, you can't see what I just did, but you will if you replay. You, you rewind after you'll see I, I showed several diff, different ways of starting without having a knot showing when you're done. Elbows down, wear your quilt, shoulders relaxed. And I'm, I'm going to echo quilt around the entire design. But instead of trying to do it all at once, I'm going to, I'm echo quilting around the geometric part of this design. The rest of it's swirly. This is another thing that people have a hard time with trying to do straight lines. So you'll get ruler kit, ruler, rulers and the ruler foot. And it takes a, a long time to go around and do ruler work. So now I'm going up and I'm going to continue echo quilting down the quilt, keeping the geometric shape of this. And afterward, you know, maybe as I go through, like other projects I started, I tend to bring out quilts that I have quilted using different techniques and they're not done yet because I have a busy life. So I'll bring the quilt out and I'll quilt on it again. But see how the quilt is just being carried? I don't have to think about it. I'm just thinking about how straight I sew and keeping my body in the proper posture. And on a bigger quilt, you'd have more loops. Right now I'm kind of wishing I, I did more loops. Elbows down, shoulders relaxed. Elbows down, shoulders relaxed. Totally different than all other methods of free motion quilting. They usually have you elbows up, push down against the fabric, and that causes the fabric to stick to the sewing machine. It makes it so your stitch length varies on you, where you'll get a really short stitch length and you'll, then you'll get a big stitch length. So this carries the quilt. So is that enough for you guys to see from a distance so that you... I can now shift to the closer camera and you can get a better idea of what I'm doing. And then I will probably be switching to another, or ending, because it's time. It's four o'clock. So elbows down, shoulders relaxed, wear your quiltlets, and all I'm worrying about is keeping the two frames together with this hand and then writing with this hand. And unlike a pen, I don't have to squeeze this and push down against it. It's just a real light hold so you can hold it any way that feels comfortable to you. If you have arthritis or you've had any hand injuries and you can't grab anymore, you've adapted to writing your pen with different finger move positioning, utilize the same position you would use for a pen, except for skip the pushing down, skip the squeezing, this does not need any squeezing or pushing down in order for thread to release from the needle. And I'm just trying to keep the distance of each stitch equal. I'm going to stop at this row because it's, it's going to, because of the shape, it's going to expand and become really big. And I don't want that. I want, I want to now, you know, do some swirly stitches after that. And part of the problem here is that this fabric is so dark, you guys are not able to see it as well as I would like you to be able to see it. So I could quickly, just for a second, switch my projects. So see that geometric shape without rulers?
switch top camera so you can see. So see how I have that geometric shape there? Then I have this, these little feathery looks, and then, or they're not feathery looks, they look more like ears, cat ears. And then we have that echo quilting there. So a little echo quilting here, a little echo quilting there. Then I could do like a big feather. Would you like me to do that? Like a maybe a a double teardrop. Does that sound good? I wish you guys could talk out loud. So a good size. And I didn't bring my I didn't bring my pencil sharpener in here to sharpen my wax pencil. See how well this is a miracle pencil. A tailor's pencil. So this is how you can know what you're going to do on a dark fabric, which is more challenging than using light fabric because with light fabric you can use the Caterpillar light tablet and just trace your design with the friction pens. You could also use a piece of bar of soap, like ivory soap. Try and decide where I want to go with it. Much easier to sketch it out. Hi, Chase Boy. Chase will not be in the lives once we relocate. They don't let puppies in there. Like that. And I could also go in here and do another and another to add interest. And so if that's if that's a thumbs up, you guys like that? Or do you think I should not do that? Does it conflict with this little swirl? And then I was thinking about doing circles. And here's the thing. I don't have the back on here right now. So I really wanted to have the backing on here to secure I mean I just have batting on the back in case you didn't know you could do that you can do that and the benefit of that is if you want to do thread play so if I wanted to do a lot of stitching and on the top it's fine but on the back if it's going to be against someone's skin you don't want to have a lot of stitching so you would do all heavy stitching I'll give you an example This was a recent class on our Fabrically Speaking live show. I, I inked the fabric and then we stitched the fabric. This is a book cover. And right here, I actually did some really tight stitches and it, it's almost embroidery. But I did this part with the with no, no backing. I actually did that with no batting either. So you should definitely watch this. This was a four part series of this. And so part of it was embroidery with no stabilizer on the back, a trick that I do. And there's these knot stitches. So it kind of looks like there's hand embroidery done on this. A couple knots here as well. And then the free motion quilting I did with no backing because I was going to then sew it into a, into the book cover. So with no backing, it's, uh, it's just nice and smooth inside easier to fit the book cover to the book without having it quilted all the way through on both sides. And I feel like I'd have to change thread. Let's see what I've got. During that, I also showed how to, how to like make your own fabric with inks. And I'm tempted to use this, but you know, I, I feel like these would be really cool, like a deliberate thing. I just have to come up with a deliberate thing to use these for. And they, it was a lot of fun. This was done with bubble wrap, two different kinds of bubble wrap to get that pattern look. Come on, I just need a quilt that's not done. Anyone? 
Yep. I'm just going to not do it. I, I always get carried away and then the show goes too long. And I have my brain is split in too many places right now with the move. I'm going to do my best to be live next Thursday, even if I'm not sewing, just to touch base with you guys and let you know how the move is going. And wouldn't it be cool if I could surprise you by actually being able to sew next Thursday? I think that's wishful thinking. I'm pretty sure it's wishful thinking, but we'll see. So if you like this, if you, if you came in late, make sure you go ahead and you, you can replay this and watch it. And know that you can always fast forward as well through things because it, my live shows run two hours long on average. And uh, so fast forward and pause. There weren't any real disasters <laughs> this week for you to fast forward through. If you like this, uh, be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already and hit the like button on your way out and be sure to join createwithclairerowley.com my school it's a free school it's a platform where you guys can hang out with each other and talk and share pictures and that's where i put close-up shots of all of the things that i do in the live feed and it's a very exciting time as we are preparing to relocate the creative feet studio to a new location and get more organized and provide more content. I, it, any of you have any more questions, know that I, I will not forget immediately after I end, I will just put the coupon in. So use member, I should just do members. Usually I do both members and member and make them both work just in case you're not hearing my speech well. And it's always all uppercase on our coupon codes. And like I said, it's not a bad, bad idea to check that coupon at any given time because it is a code I use for those of you who are members of Create with Claire Rowley and my newsletter. So sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And let's see. I love you guys. I will touch base no matter what next Thursday, but... I may or may not be at a sewing machine and thank you for your patience as we work on this move on this next chapter of my life and creative feats life and for being you. I love you guys so much. Mwah. Bye.